These are the stories of the Arizona men who served with conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty. Eight Arizonans who fought across the trench-lined battlefields of Europe from July 15th through September 13th, 1918, were decorated with the Distinguished Service Cross. Private Frank C. Morey of Winslow was the only one of these courageous men to be killed in combat during that time period. Private Morey was called upon to deliver an important military dispatch to the front line. While attempting to get through the heavy shell and machine gun fire, this gallant soldier was killed in action near Forêt de Vancher, France, on September 13, 1918. One of the most decorated of these distinguished Arizonans was Captain George T. Fleet. Fleet was first wounded in action October 17, 1917. Over the next nine months, he was wounded in combat seven times, gassed twice, and received several battlefield commissions, rising to the rank of captain. Captain Fleet, on July 21, 1918, showing absolute disregard for his own life, crossed a battlefield with vital information on enemy strength and positions, saving thousands of American and French lives. Three Arizonans, Lieutenant Joseph F. Swift, Lieutenant James S. Higley, and Captain Edward J. Mitchell served with the 91st Division during the savage fighting of the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. All three distinguished themselves on the same battlefield across a two-day period. Lieutenant Joseph F. Swift of Safford, on September 27, 1918, armed only with a pistol, advanced on a German machine gun nest, killing four German soldiers. On September 29th, while making an attempt to capture another German machine gun emplacement, he was killed by enemy sniper fire. Lieutenant James S. Higley from Phoenix, over a two-day period beginning September 26th, fearlessly led his platoon through sustained enemy fire, capturing multiple enemy positions along the way. While leading his platoon against entrenched German positions, Lieutenant Higley was killed in combat on September 27, 1918. Captain Edward J. Mitchell of Prescott, while leading his troops across the battlefield, encountered and captured three German field guns, six officers, and over 425 German soldiers. Captain Edward J. Mitchell, for displaying the highest bravery, courage, and extraordinary leadership on the battlefield, was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. In October 1918 was a deadly month for Arizonans. Private Louis Comina from Chrysotile, Arizona, Private Hugh K. Gale of Franklin, and U.S. Navy Apprentice First Class Eugene H. Tenley of Wilcox, all died on October 4, 1918, while displaying the highest levels of bravery and conspicuous gallantry. The last Arizonan to die in the blood-stained month of October was Lieutenant Morgan B. McDermott of Tucson. On a reconnaissance mission, he found himself behind enemy lines with a wounded comrade, and while rendering aid, was wounded himself. Taken from the battlefield to a French field hospital, he died nine days later on October 29, 1918. Seven days before the armistice, three Arizonans, all fighting on the same battlefield, all members of the 89th Division, were recognized for their courage and heroism under fire. Corporal George C. Hollis of Ajo, Private Richard E. King of Tucson, and Sergeant Elgin J. Moore of Winslow, all were awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. Colonel Charles A. Dravo of Fort McDowell, Arizona, led a frontline battalion in an attack on a heavily reinforced German position. The battle lasted for more than 29 hours. Colonel Dravo labored without rest or relief, finally overwhelming the enemy after vicious hand-to-hand -hand combat. He was the last Arizona to be honored and awarded the Distinguished Service Cross in World War I. 
27 Arizonans for their selflessness, leadership, and courageous acts of heroism on the battlefields of France were recognized and honored with the Distinguished Service Cross. What drew me into the American Legion was largely the focus on family. My name is Derek Grimes. I'm the commander of District 11 Department of North Carolina. Family time is sacred, and it's changed largely its public perception of what the American Legion is. So people see the American Legion as a place that helps and a place that gives back, in addition to being a place for veterans to go together and take care of each other. As a family, we can accomplish anything. There's nothing we can't do when we throw the full might of the American Legion family at something.